Derek Bruns. Um, as of 4 o'clock today, I'll be a graduate of Ecotech Institute. Congratulations. Um, <laughs> thank you. So uh, one quick comment I want to say is just I want to thank the board and I want to thank the faculty of this school because I feel like I have received a broad-based education. Um, we've been trained that it's not all renewable versus non-renewable. It's really about the overall portfolio and using our resources as wisely as possible and also you know, moving into the future as wisely as possible. So once again, thank you for that. Um, the question I had is really regarding the role of government in uh, pricing. Uh, over the last couple of months, we've seen that um, the government levied some uh, t uh, tariffs on incoming Chinese solar panels and it even kind of caused a rift in the solar industry itself between manufacturers and installers. So what I'd like to know is what do you think the role, if any, of government should be in pricing on renewable energy? Yeah. <clears throat> I'll start because probably I sold all these equipment to the Chinese who are manufacturing. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I, I tell you a secret. Um, many people uh, complain about pricing because of man uh, power or labor. And in the solar industry, and I, others on the panel might disagree with me, I really don't think that is a factor because uh, it is a semiconductor type uh, manufacturing. <coughs> and it, it is mostly automated and doesn't need a lot of uh, human inter interaction with the equipment. I, I am against any regulation, whether it is internal or external or whatever, because you, you uh, suffocate an industry that's starting. You don't want to do that. However, I really think we don't encourage our industry that much. Because if we really look at pricing and costing of a, of a project, let's say that you want to put a 100 kilowatt system, you really look, you have to look at the whole picture, not only the panel price. And this is what we are doing. People are looking at the panel price, they look at some advertisement, advertisement on somewhere and they say it is uh, 50 cents a watt or whatever, and they want to save two cents. But they don't look at the labor and the transportation and the benefit and how well the, the module is designed. I mean, we know how good a module that is designed and manufactured in the United States versus a module that is manufactured uh, in, in China and which one is going to perform longer and which one is going to last uh, forever uh, versus you have to change it in 10 years. So I really think we have to look at the whole picture rather than one little thing. Because if you're looking at the, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you looked at some cost analysis of, uh, of systems, solar energy systems and wind systems, and the, the hardware represents almost, the hardware meaning the panels, <coughs> represents about 50% of the cost. So we really need to look at the whole thing. The question of government involvement in business could be debated for centuries but, uh, right here. Um, but had an interesting thing happen about two months ago. We've always had a problem with the trade imbalance with China, and we, we get very upset with China because we're running a deficit. A couple months ago, we actually were sent uh, some folks over there to talk to them about the fact that it's reversed in certain categories. And this is where that first comment about the, the, just the numbers and the resource allocation comes into effect. China is withholding uh, export of certain raw materials. Um, high technology, you know, when they suddenly go, well, we've got it, and this is where technology is going, because um, they've got it and we don't. Uh, or they've got plenty of it. Um, so I think the answer is, you know, government involvement has, is going to become more and more and more delicate as the resources become more scarce. However, I do think there has to be incentives to start up new, uh, new innovation, but not to the point, uh, as Craig mentioned earlier, where it uh, makes you sloppy as a business person. Yeah, I, 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 I admit, I'm much more of a free market person, but I do like incentives to go in the right direction versus downright subsidies. And when we start cross talking about internationally, again, as everybody's competing for these resources that are becoming more and more scarce, it becomes that much more delicate a game to play. It used to be the United States could walk around and say, let me tell you how it's going to be. The number of business meetings I've sat in in Europe and in Asia where some American businessman literally uses the phrase, let me tell you how it's going to be. Well, we're no longer the big dog on the block. Um, you've got, give or take change, uh, $15 trillion deficit with 1.7, depending how you count certain things, of that held by China. Now, people say to me, well, do you think China's going to come in and 
do a run on the bank and cash it all in and bankrupt America. No, we're their number one trading partner. They're our number one trading partner, so they're not gonna shoot themselves in the foot, but it does make the negotiations a lot more interesting. So anytime the government does or doesn't get involved, I think we have to start seeing things on a global perspective. We can no longer just sort of do, you know, what's right for America is right for the world. We are so past that. I'm not sure, though, we necessarily have 100% of Congress thinking that way just yet, which is the most diplomatic way I can say. <laughs> I'm quite certain we don't have 100% of Congress thinking that way. 